Welcome back. You are watching KTN News Desk. Many thanks for staying with us. Among the stories that we are uh, working on for you at this hour, we will be speaking to lawyer and uh, former LSK um, leader or CEO, Apollo Mboya, on that ruling. We expect to come out of parliament in the afternoon by the speaker, Justin Muturi, and we'll also be going to ODM, where ODM leader Raila Odinga is meeting youthful aspirants at the Orange House. So these are some of the stories that we have lined up for you and discussions lined up for you here. Many thanks for joining us. And back to the discussion we were having a while back with the political analyst Dunstan Omari on that particular visit to Gusiland, Kisi County and Nyamira County by the president and his deputy Dunstan Omari still is in studio to help us analyze that particular visit. You said each and every place he goes has been carefully selected because uh, they're friendly to him. But there's a question I asked earlier on. Given how Nyamira and Kisi counties voted in 2013, 67% for Raila Odinga, 68% for Raila Odinga as well for both Kisi and, um, and, and Nyamira, why do we have word that this could be a swing vote? What happened between 2013 and now? In 2013, the question that was before the, the, the Abagusi was the neighborhood vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis a person who was very far. Mm -hmm. Very many people opted to be near Raila Odinga because of proximity that mm -hmm. all these regions come from Nyanza. 20, come 2013, 2014, the creation of government, Omogusi felt that he has been completely ignored. Why? Jubilee went still using the old channels over mm -hmm. the Kibaki regime the one family aspect of the, the Musa Nyandusi and the Nyachai family. So that people resented that question. So people started to distance themselves more further from Jubilee. Jubilee lost face even much more up to around, up to around one week ago. The, re <coughs> the reason being that Jubilee continued to use the same appointment mm -hmm. that have been used since 1964. When you're talking about Charles Nyachai, you're yeah. talking about uh, Chris Obure, when you're talking about these people. So people felt more closer to Raila Odinga. That might not be the position as from the start of this week. Remember, the question Omogusi was asking mm -hmm. that NASA, when NASA came in, and people like uh, uh, Professor Ngeri moved to, to that area, mm -hmm. there was a lot of excitement in the Omogusi nation that at least we as the Kisses are going to get a serious position at the, at the table of NASA. Nothing has happened. So the people already, I was in, in Nyamira last week, yeah. people asking, what is there for us as the Kisses in NASA? No explanation is being given. Two, the approach that Jubilee is taking from the last two weeks is that those faces of the people who are not seen to represent the interests of the Kisis have been pushed back. Mm -hmm. Remember between the Kisi and the Omogusi nation, there are sibling rivalry. The county of Nyamira feels that the county of Kisi has always dominated the politics of Nyamira mm -hmm. and issues of appointment. So the Nyamira people feel that they would want, they would have wanted the yeah. president to deal with them as Nyamira people. For the first time you've seen, the president has directly gone to Nyamira without starting from Kisi. And the organizers are the Nyamira people. So I feel that slowly the president is getting to learn their mistakes and the Jubilee is slowly and steadily gaining momentum. If NASA does not correct that image, the president and his party will have a huge junk of the votes that are hanging. So is the ground shifting? The ground is shifting, and in the Omogusi nation, the grounds will continuously shift always after every two weeks because the dynamics are changing. When NASA appears organized, the Omogusi nation is comfortable inside. When NASA feels totally disorganized, like now the way it looks, the Omogusi people are asking, why are we heading to a destination that has no shape? So for now, my good sister Kisa, I'll tell you, it is still very early to determine where the Omogusi vote is. But in essence, yes. the Omogusi believes that he is supposed to be NASA. Ndani kwa ndani. Ndani ndani. But so, if NASA misbehaves, yes. the Omogusi will 
shift base. So what are the conversations that will shape the Gusiland politics, apart from a Mutuetu getting an appointment? What are these things that would really entice the Kisi voter? But Omogusi has grievances that need to be addressed. One, the Omogusi is a serious farmer. The question of tea, the inequality of payment of tea bonuses between regions in Mount Kenya and regions in, in the larger Gusi land. Bad difference, nobody has ever explained why. Bonuses in Kisi is almost a half of the tea bonuses in other regions. Mm. Two, the banana industry has collapsed. The Omogusi opened a branch of uh, the factor of bananas in Kisi that has closed. Free the question about the unemployment of the, the Kisis. The Omogusi has no land. Land has gone to be so scant. So how do we get any form of factories in Kisi? There are quite a number of tea factories in Kisi that have not transformed into being employment centers. The university called the Kisi University mm -hmm. is the biggest factory for employment for the kisses. None has been dealt with, ad, 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 that issue has not been addressed adequately. The question of the porous border between Chebilate to Kilgoris, there is cattle rustling between the, uh, the, the Rift Valley region and the Kisi region and Nyamira regions. Why is there still cattle rustling mm -hmm. in two areas that don't have pastoralists? The Bomet, the Bomet guys, yeah. the people in Kilgoris, are not nom nomads. Why is it that there is that issue? That has not been addressed. Also, the question of roads, feeder roads. Kisses, kisses are farmers. Mm. They will want feeder roads that are directly possible for the kisses to take their produce to the factory. So right. those issues compounded. Mm -hmm. They make NASA more attractive mm. than Jubilee. But if the president will address those issues, and lastly, the question of the IDPs. All right. Very many kisses mm. were chased from Rift Valley. Very many kisses, very many Omo sons and daughters of Omogusi who lost their property. They have never been compensated. So if the president is able to address those grievances, I'm definitely a kiss. I'm telling you, there will be chance that they will change their position. All right. Let's wait and see how this works out. <laughs> Dunstan, thank you so much for coming in. Dunstan Amari, a political analyst. And remember, we are also going to go live at the Orange House where ODM leader Rilo Odinga is meeting hundreds of youthful aspirants. And uh, we are bringing you those pictures live there from the Orange House. We'll be going there in a bit uh, to see what is happening and some of the addresses that are being made there at the Orange House here in Nairobi. Now, away from politics, let's turn our attention to the petition against the Auditor General and the National Assembly Speaker, Justin Maturi, is today afternoon set to rule on whether the consideration of the petition for the removal of Auditor General Edward Ouko will stop or, wait the, or await the determination of two separate cases against it. Muturi's decision will determine whether Parliament ignites yet another row with the judiciary as well as Ouko as it enters the tricky territory of those who defy court orders and contempt of court. Last week, the Speaker ordered Ouko to appear before Parliament or face unspecified consequences. Muturi said Ouko, whose office is mandated with audit and report on the accounts and funds of national county governments and independent offices now risks facing sanctions from the National Assembly if he refuses to meet the Finance, Trade and Planning Committee. Oko had earlier stated that he will not be appearing before the committee even if summoned as that would be acting in contempt of court. The Auditor General rushed to court to challenge the committee's unfair inquiry process, which he says violates his rights. Justice George Dunga ordered the committee, chaired by Aina Moy Member of Parliament, Benjamin Langat, to halt the probe until the case is heard on May the 15th. All right, and before we get into that discussion, as we wait for that ruling by the Speaker, a section of ODM leaders have come out to defend the Auditor General and uh, we will be listening to some of the reasons that they have given for defending him. Auditor General Because we know it is the president who wants Ouko out of office. 
It right. is not anybody else. You are right. Forget about those other people who have forgotten their names. Right. It is him who wants Uhuko out of office. That the people who are pursuing the Auditor General, Edward Uhuko, are right within the heart of the government of Jubilee, the government of Uhuru Kenyatta. Wako ndani ya serikali ya Uhuru wale watu ambao wanafuata fuata huko wanataka kutoa huko ofisini. And we want to give them a warning that we know why you are pursuing huko. You are pursuing huko because huko refused to give you a clean bill of health on Eurobond because you stole Eurobond. All right, let's now speak to lawyer Paul Mboya, who's joining us live from our city centre studios on the intrigues surrounding that uh, quest to oust uh, Auditor General Edward Oko from office. Uh, many thanks for joining us. It seems uh, like uh, we are have, having parallel voices from both the judiciary and the National Assembly. What exactly does the law say? Uh, thank you very much. Um, right now, if you look at the history of this matter, the, deep, the Director of Public Prosecution has, has had his say on it. And um, what we were expecting is that um, the people who the DPP had cleared to be charged should have been charged like yesterday. But what we are seeing is that they have not been charged. And the courts that are directed that there is an, an injunction from the proceedings of the of the of of, of uh, parliament uh, is going to be defied, and uh, we are waiting for that because it brings into question the um, the, the theory of uh, checks and balances between the three arms of government, but also the question of respecting the court decisions, which is fundamental within the rule of law. Parliament have been quoted more than two times or more than one time saying that the judiciary is interfering with their functions. Do you think uh, they have a point with this? The question of interference is neither here nor there. The Constitution made it possible, for lack of a better word, for the courts to interfere with those kind of processes. And it's only in very unique circumstances, as the one we see right now, that the courts can actually injunct uh, parliament from proceeding with a particular matter. In this uh, question, it is whether the constitutional right of the Auditor General, Edward Oko, is being violated. And the question is, was taken to court, and the court was persuaded that in this instance, after the DPP had um, given his, um, uh, his verdict on the matter, then Parliament cannot then proceed to purport to be investigating um, uh, the, 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 the Auditor General. Whichever way the ruling is made, they might decide to go on with the proceedings, they might decide to follow the court order, but if it goes the other way, do you foresee another row being ignited between these two independent bodies? If, if the parliament process continues, that process will be quashed by the court. Indeed, um, we have seen that before. Um, even when uh, 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 there was um, a tribunal that was formed uh, for the purposes of removing of the Judicial Service Commission members, uh, the, the court quashed those, 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 uh, the, 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 the Gazette notice. And I, I foresee that if Parliament is foolhardy to continue with the process the way they have threatened that they will continue, then the same will, will suffer the fate uh, that uh, others have suffered before, and the, the court will definitely quash those proceedings, and they will be, it will be a waste of taxpayers' money and a waste of time. So what exactly are we witnessing here? Is it supremacy battles? Here, is more, it's more than supremacy battle. Here, it's a question where there is also political intrigues. There is also meddling into the um, independent office of the Auditor General, it's also a question whereby some people who the Auditor General has found to be culpable seems to be pulling the strings behind the scene in order for the Auditor General to be removed from office. 
Apollo Mboya, thank you very much for speaking to us. He's joining us live from our city center studios. And of course, we will await that particular ruling in the afternoon. And tomorrow, we will also be analyzing how it goes down today in parliament with a speaker set to make a ruling. Apollo Mboya is an advocate. Let's now go to that story I've been talking about. Um, ODM leader Raila Odinga is currently meeting youthful aspirants at the Orange House here in Nairobi. And Opio Andai, member of parliament, is currently making an address. Let's just go over there live and listen in. Constitution. So any attempt to criminalize mass action is tantamount to taking us back to the dark days that we do not wish to go back to. And anyone attempting to take us back to those dark days is essentially an enemy of the people of Kenya. And we shall not be intimidated. Nalewana, we shall not be intimidated. We all love peace. But it cannot be peace for the sake of peace. Peace cannot be an end in itself. If you want sustainable peace to exist in this country, if you want lasting peace to be found in this country, then assist the IBCU as the executive to deliver a credible election on the 8th of August. Then peace shall prevail. But don't scare us. Don't scare us with stupid uh, pronouncements about barring or outlawing mass action. Mass action is what has brought us to where we are as a country. And mass action will continue to be practiced by well-meaning Kenyans of this country, well-meaning citizens of this country. And therefore, I want to conclude that I wish all of you all the best. In fact, I'm looking forward to many of you joining me and my colleagues in parliament. Because we need strong, energetic, youthful people in the National Assembly and the Senate to keep the executive account, and even the county assemblies. We do not want people who simply go by the wind. We want strong people who can stand firm during good or bad times in the defense of the interests of the people and in the defense of the interests of our movement. Every political party or movement exists solely for one purpose, to acquire state power and exercise it. We as ODM, are focused on acquiring state power on the 8th of August so as to be able to implement our very robust and progressive manifesto for the good of not only our membership but for the good of the rest of the country as well. So those very few remarks, I wish you all the best. The party leader should have been here, in fact, up to one hour ago he was really uh, struggling to be here. But as you know, he just arrived last night from foreign trip and due to very many pending issues which could not wait, it's been delayed. Otherwise, I wish you all the best. May God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Opio Wandai, Secretary for uh, Political Affairs of the ODM. Now, we're going to take questions to Kakule Kwa Krao. Natafadhali usiseme, maswali kama matano to the National Elections Board. Don't start telling us how you are going to flow someone in a particular constituency or ward. Put questions directed to the National Elections Board. Na kama hauta sema hiyo, tuwa kupokonya kipaza sauti. Tunanza na hapa. Nataka aspirants pekea, okay. Pena pale. Where's your aspirant? Chair, chair, chair. ODM leader um, Raila Odinga is expected to be meeting the youth, but currently some addresses being made. We've just seen Ugunja, member of parliament, Opio Wandai, making an address there. Hundreds of youth have congregated at the Orange House. And of course, uh, most of them are aspiring uh, to be members of parliament under the ODM banner in the August 8th general election. We'll be getting back to that in a few, even as uh, the addresses continue to be made. But Let's now cross borders and take a look at what is happening in Uganda. Assistant Inspector General Felix Kawesi will be buried today at his ancestral home in Kiazanga, Luengo district, after a midday mass in his honor. 
Kawesi was assassinated by gunmen on motorcycles after leaving his home in Kampala last Friday. His bodyguard, Corporal Kenneth Erao, and driver, Constable Geoffrey Mambewa, were also shot and killed by the unknown people. President Yore Museveni condemned the attack and ordered for the installation of surveillance cameras in major towns and on highways. Kawesi once served as the head of police operations in Greater Kampala and gained prominence for overseeing frequent arrests of Uganda's main opposition leader, Kiza Besije. Kawesi was the second senior police official to be assassinated. In November last year, Ugandan Major Suleiman Kigundu and his bodyguard Sergeant Stephen Mukasa were shot dead by men on motorcycles along Masanafu Road in Kampala. Now, Pope Francis has begged for God's forgiveness for the sins and failings of the church and its members implicated in the 1994 Rwanda genocide that killed around 800,000 people. The pontiff conveyed his profound sadness for the genocide against the Tutsis. The Vatican said in a statement after a meeting between Francis and the Rwanda president, Paul Kagame. His pardon plea followed a request from Rwanda in November for the church to apologize for its role in the massacre. Since the genocide, those victims were mostly from the Tutsi minority. The Catholic Church has been accused of being close to the Hutu extremist regime in power in 1994. A number of churches be became scenes of mass killings as Hutu militiamen found people seeking refuge in them, sometimes turned over by priests with no way out. The Pope says he hopes the humble recognition of the failings of that period, which unfortunately disfigured the face of the church, may contribute to a purification of memory and promote renewed trust. During the 20th century, commemorations in April 2014, Kagame accused the Catholic Church of having participated fully in establishing the colonial ideology that created the divide between Hutus and Tutsis, which he claimed led to the genocide. Now, 66% of Mombasa residents say they are aligned to NASA and the incumbent Governor Ali Hassan Joho would clearly retain his seat if elections were to be held today, with 68% of the residents saying they would vote for Joho. And just who would, who would voters in Kiambu County vote for if elections were held today? That's the question that trends and insights for Africa sought to find out in the latest poll that they conducted. Let's listen in to part of the results of that particular survey. Survey. We asked if, elect if elections were to be held today, whom would you vote for as governor of Kiambu? And you can see the results there. We have William Kabogo at 46%. We have Ferdinand Waititu at 33%. 16% are undecided. Uh, for a 16% undecided percentage, that is very high. And we're hoping as we move closer to the election, it should get to below 5%. Now, the next question we asked the respondents, if elections were to be held today, whom would they vote for as governor of Mombasa? And we find that the incumbent, Hassan Ali Joho, has 68%, uh, followed by Suleiman Shabal at 15%, Hassan Omar at 7%, 7% are undecided, then you have Hezron Awiti at 3%, and others 1%. Then the next question we asked the residents of Machakos is, if elections are to be held today, whom would they vote for as governor of Machakos? We see Alfred Mutua, the incumbent, with 75%. Then we have Wavinyan Deti, uh, second place, at 8%. We have another 8% who are undecided. We have uh, Bernard Keller, who I believe is the deputy governor, at 7%. We have Peter Matluki at 1%. Uh, Robert Mbui at 1%. And then the rest are zero, less than 1%. So those are the results for Machakos. 
All right, we wrap it up on that note. Many thanks for joining us here on KTN News Desk. And of course, uh, up next is Business Today with Abi Agina, our sign language interpreter has been Maresha Owiti, and I am Akisa Wandera. Good afternoon.